الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه قل الله تبارك وتعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى سيز ان سوره ابراهيم الله الذي خلق السماوات والارض وانزل من السماء ماء فاخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم وسخر لكم الفلك لتجري في البحر بامره وسخر لكم الانهار وسخر لكم الشمس والقمر دائبين وسخر لكم الليل والنهار واتاكم من كل ما سالتموه وان تعدوا نعمه الله لا تحصوها ان الانسان لظلوم كفار In this verse or these verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us examples of his favors on us And then he concludes by saying that if you try to count the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot number them because they are beyond numbering, beyond counting. There are too many. And it's unfortunate that many times people look for the missing part or the lacking part or the empty part of the cup rather than seeing what they have been favored with. Maybe we have too many things that others are deprived from. They don't have it or they're lacking. So we should look at that. We should reflect on these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we look at the example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us, he started by mentioning the, mo- the favors by saying, he's the one who created the heavens and earth for you. Imagine we are on earth and if you compare the size of earth to the rest of the planets or the rest of the uh, gal- parts of the galaxy, literally we are too tiny. We are too tiny even to see. If you compare it to the size of the sun, for example, we are one millionth the size of the sun. And we are one of even negligible thing compared to another sun that's bigger than ours within our own galaxy our own galaxy is too tiny compared to parts of the universe still Allah says he's created this whole thing for us and the scientists now tell us something amazing they say that we on earth we are situated, we've been positioned in a place that's most suitable for us to survive. That our position is the most suitable for life. And the rest of the universe is working together to keep us intact, to keep Earth in place. So we don't. Huh? come close or far from the sun or any other parts that could destroy us until Allah decides so so Allah created this whole universe for us so this is the one of the greatest favors and those with with intellect and knowledge will realize that and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given us another type of favor which is bringing down water from the clouds to give us life to bring the uh, the the cultivation the, and the things for us and for ca- our cattle to feed and this is the source of our life water and meat and grass and planets without it we wouldn't have life another favor from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah then is telling us also that he's gave us the ability to travel through air and sea. So we build ships in the sea and in air, so we travel. So this is running by the grace of Allah. He's the one who makes it subservient to us. We couldn't. Just imagine these huge ships passing through water or huge airplanes are cutting through air who made this subservient to us but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's the laws of physics right but who created it who made it who made these laws 
stable and consistent but the creator right the real beauty is in the consistency of these things the consistency of all these creations of all these laws the one who's saying in Allah yumsiku samawat Allah the one is the one who's keeping the heavens intact for you otherwise it's meant to col to collide it's meant to hit one another and we we could see these comets around the uh, that's spreading the universe but then uh, we are immune we are protected we're protected by the gravity of the huge uh, planets like Neptune and similar uh, and Sun this great uh, mother of us sun is protecting us by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of its huge gravity also acts like protecting us from these other uh, harmful but subjects uh, other harmful things floating in in the universe Allah then is going giving us many other examples of day and night alteration of day and night and so on and then he goes and says he's given you all of that which you're asking for in fact this verse is is so nice when you read it in one of two ways like what the imam recited today Allah has given you of everything you asked for right this is one way to recite it it's the same Arabic the same words let me read it the other one and I stop and then he's the one who's given you of everything and you never asked is that isn't that true yes ya Rabbi, it is true we came to this world helpless and we found everything ready for us we found earth ready for us to survive we found sustenance we found water food vegetation plantation uh, atmosphere and so on we found parents uh, loving ones to receive us to take care of us and so on so he's given us of everything and we never asked that's another this is the, the same verse isn't that a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of course. If you try to count it, you cannot really number it. It's beyond count. Allah then is telling us the attitude we have and the Allah's uh, attitude. He's saying, That man is very unjust and uh, dis disbelieving most of the time means we look for the empty part of the cup most of the time and forget about the other half which is full of blessings oh this person has more money than I yeah but I have more of one two three four five huh? I have health I have security I have this I have that I have a lot Allah gave everybody a lot but look for what Allah has given you this is our attitude unfortunately many times Zalum, we are very unfair with Allah he's given us a lot and we are overlooking that whereas in Surah Al-Nahl Allah says the same verse وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا the same verse the same wording is repeated in Surah Al-Nahl and then Allah concludes it with إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah is so merciful and forgiving so in here after he's counting the favors he's saying you he, you man is very unfair very unjust to yourself and to your Lord whereas your Lord is so forgiving and so kind and merciful will he change no he will not change Allah will not change but we can change we can be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what he wants that's what he wants from us he doesn't want us to pay him back 
There is nothing we can do to pay Allah's back. Nothing, right? But how can we, uh, in return, do towards this favor? By thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you Allah for that. By thanking with our tongue, and most importantly, just like the other verse, when Allah gave us the example of a great family, the family of Dawood. Why, is, why family of Dawood? Dawood was a king, and his son was a king, and he's got what no one else has got, ever. Neither David nor Solomon. Those two has been given favors and bounties like no one else. Let's tell you, Dawood alayhi salam was, huh, first of all, supported by Allah and was given victory against the enemies. You know that, when he was young. And then he was, uh, Dawood was blacksmith. This is, was his profession, right? He used to make shields. And Allah gave him the skill of making shields and shaping steel to make huh, full body shields to protect themselves from the enemy. That was his own profession. No one else could do that but him. That's one. Now, another thing, Dawood was given a very beautiful voice. And when he used to recite the Psalms, uh, as Zabur, right? He would sit and recite, then mountains and water, streams and stones will rehearse with him. Ya jibalu and birds. Ya jibalu now, when we hear any beautiful orchestra, you say amazingly beautiful, but nothing is really more beautiful than Dawood reciting huh? the words of Allah, and you find the birds and mountains rehearsing, huh? repeating with him. Sulaiman, his son, was given the wisdom, right? And on top of that, he was given a kingship like no one else. Rabbi habli mulkan la yanbaghi li ahadin ba'di. Given the kingship, the uh, authority and wealth and so on, like no one else. Allah makes subservient to him every other creature, including shayateen. Uh, this shayateen, he used to uh, use them. Use them, of course, in the right course. Uh, and those who will disobey him, you put him in chains and prison them. Birds, animals, air, uh, wind, uh, all within his army. Uh. So, Allah has given us the example of these people who were given favors like no one else. They were so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know how Allah described it? I'malu ala Dawooda shukra. Through their actions. Yes, he mentioned part of the, their uh, praising Allah, like Dawood used to praise Allah in a very beautiful way, that even birds and mountains will rehearse that. But most importantly, I'malu ala Dawooda shukra, through their actions. The, the family of David used to be grateful through their actions. All their actions reflected gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Giving wealth to use it in the proper way. To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Given power, they used it in the right way. And you know the example of Sulaiman with the queen of Yemen. Right? Allah gave example in Surah Saba, Sheba. Right? Like how he used it in the proper way. He never used it to oppress or torture or spread injustice. He used it to spread justice and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to be mercy, to, to, as a uh, tool of mercy to that. Not only to people, but to everything. Even to ants, you know, when his army was going, uh, walking, he was so kind with the ants. He wouldn't destroy their villages, right? Even with the hudhud, uh, the, this the nice, beautiful, weak bird, that bird was sure of the justice of Suleiman. And he argued with Suleiman. Suleiman, no one else had the power of Suleiman. But this hudhud, this bird, huh? who was very confident that he's facing a very fair king, very just king. He wasn't afraid of him because the king, 
swore, swore to slaughter him or punish him because he was absent. He lost, he, he left his position in the army. So he said, where have you been? He said, I got news that you don't have, O Prophet Suleiman. Ah, he's challenging the head of the state. I came from Sheba, I came from Saba. I have seen people worshipping huh, the sun and you don't know about them, O Messenger of Allah. So he's full of uh, trust and uh, he coming and tell him a great message. There are people who need you over there. And then you know the story. Uh, he gave him a message to deliver. He said, oh, we will see whether you are truthful or not. He was confident, I'm right. So he took the message and he dropped it to the queen. Uh, and even that queen was very reasonable and good queen. She got the message and she became a believer later. These people were grateful through their actions. So Allah wants our action. He gave something, use it. Use it in the way to please Allah. Use it to make this world a better place to survive. You give being given power, don't miss. Huh? Use it. Don't spread uh, havoc on earth using your power because you have the power. Don't take people away. Huh? Don't put them in prisons unfairly. Don't kill them unfairly. Don't steal people's money. Don't abuse people. Don't put people in unneeded or unnecessary uh, misery or calamities. Use what Allah gave you to spread peace on earth, to spread love around. And finally, most important favor Allah gave is Iman, is guidance. Because with all of that, you need Iman to use it properly. You Muslims have been given that. So, then you are the best to deliver the message. You are the best and the most trusted to be, as Allah said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil ma'roof. You've been the best nation sent out to people in joining good and forbidding evil. This is your task, O Muslims. In joining good and forbidding evil, all sorts of good, enjoin it. Hand in hand with the rest of the people, with the Christians, with the Jews, with the Hindus, with anyone who's in joining good, we are together in joining the good. Hand in hand, we are forbidding the evil. With everyone, we are leaders. Making this world a better place, cleaner place, safer place, peaceful place, this is our task. This is how we thank Allah. This is how we follow the footsteps of the family of Dawood. I'malu ala Dawood shukra. Act and show gratitude through actions. O oh, family of David. And this is our task as Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the straight path. May Allah make this land safe and peaceful and all the lands around. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.